Good afternoon. I'm going to welcome everybody to our regular council meeting of Tuesday, September 27th. Uh, we are being live streamed, so welcome to all of you watching from home. We have a agenda in front of us. Do we have any additions or deletions, Mr. Coleman? Uh, nothing from administration, Madam Chair. Thank you. Looking for someone. Good, Councillor Wanchuk. Thank you. That's unanimous. Uh, we have minutes of our September 13th meeting. Someone want to move those as being accurate. Thank you very much. Councillor Scobie, comments, questions, all in favor. That is unanimous. We have an opportunity at the beginning of every meeting for people from the public who would like to address council on an item that is not on the agenda to do so. I know we have one such person, Mr. Werman, do you wanna come forward? Um, turn on your microphone state your name and your address, and then you can begin your presentation. Just right there and then just hit the bar on the microphone. Yep. And your name and address first, please. Ron Werben. Uh, I'm on Range Road 273, 49103, R4 Kelmer. I applied for an access approach. The location is okay. It's away from utilities, but Chelsea Isles said that I have to put in a culvert that it is mandatory in your access, county access approach guidelines under construction. Number five, one, a new corrugated metal culvert, minimum 500 millimeters in diameter, or as determined by Leduc County's inspections, is required for an approach that requires drainage. This will be to the discretion of Leduc County Engineering Representative, and it again repeats it in 5.2. Now, that requires drainage. It is on a hill. There is no water run there. And if I would, there was a water run, I would put a culvert in because the only one that would be affected would be me because if there was a water run there, it would back up and flood my yard. And no one has to lecture me about blocked water runs because for the last 26 years, the neighbor to the north of me had put a berm in that blocks the natural water run. And every year I get anywhere from three to seven acres and up to over 600 feet south of the north property line flooded. So nobody asked to lecture me about blocked water runs. And I do have photos along if anybody questions about the water run, I can show you here. But I feel this is wrong, that I should be forced to spend money on a culvert of that size where there is no water run. When I see all kinds of people that are putting in approaches and they're not being required to put in a culvert and other people that are illegally putting in approaches with no culverts and actually blocking water runs. And I would be willing to compromise at, if I were required to put a culvert in there, a 150 millimeter or six inch culvert, same size, that that would be more than sufficient because there is no water run and the spot where I want to put the approach into the property. Okay, thank you. So request um, to administration, uh, Mr. Coleman to look into that and then get back to- um, And also Mr. that I'd like to get this accomplished before it freezes and snows. Mm -hmm. uh, is that acceptable, Mr. Coleman? Acceptable. Any questions, any clarifying questions for Mr. Werman? I am seeing none. So we will look into that uh, for you, um, Mr. Werben, and get back to you hopefully as soon as we can. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks. Move as, pre move as information, do we do that? Councilor Lewis, all in favor? Um, I think you have another presentation. Is there any other presentations? From the public, people, yep, who are not. <laughs> Good try, Mr. Honesty. Please come forward, state your name and your address. Thank you very much, uh, Councilor Scobie. Hi. Hi. I'm Jen Greniger. My address is 48446 Range Road 23. Okay. 
Um, we're here today just to enlighten council and make you aware of a couple of things going on with us right now. Um, one is maybe addressing unconventional farms in the county that don't maybe follow standards, as well as the taxation of those properties. Um, it was brought to our attention yesterday that our farm was being reassessed uh, by the county as commercial rather than agricultural. This is a result of how we sell our on-farm products. Um, we generate our business a little bit differently than big farms who often sell to conventional pools or systems. We sell our product on-farm and our product is fresh cut flowers. So not grain, not hay, not wheat, but very different in that capacity. So we sell our product as experiences. So we have a UPIC flower farm. Uh, we host events like stagettes and showers and those guests come to the farm, experience our property um, and integrate our product into all of those services. Because of that, um, business is being conducted a little bit differently on our property. Um, so not only are we not a conventional farm per se, the way we sell our product also isn't. And I'm really hoping that the County of Leduc can take the opportunity to enlighten themselves and potentially become leaders. This is not something new. Um, there's lots of us out there. Um, the one thing I just wanted to share with you today um, that I think is also really important is regards to our experience with your assessors. It wasn't a really great experience <laughs> to tell you the truth and just to not take up a lot of time, but to let you know about us. Um, we, sorry, 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 sorry. Take your time. <laughs> Um, not only do we grow and sell our product, but we've been a part of the Leduc County Ag Tour for two seasons. We've also partnered with Discover Leduc and Travel Alberta, um, enlightening and educating about farms. Um, as part of the Ag Tour, not only is our cut flower farm a part of the tour, but there's also market gardeners, hydroponic gardeners. There's people farming in Nisku, which is super cool, something new that I just learned about. Um, hops farmers, just to name a few. I find in general, the definition of farming needs to be adjusted. Um, with new kind of progressive farming, we don't need quarter sections of land to farm. Um, we can do it on a smaller scale. Um, it doesn't look normal, I get that. Um, and the other issue again is how we sell our products. So it doesn't matter to me if you're a cattle farmer or a bee farmer or a flower farmer, you should be able to sell your product on your farm. Now, health regulations, all that stuff, absolutely has to be followed, but that should have nothing to do with the taxation of the property itself. It's still an agricultural piece of property. Just breaking down that last bit, anything else? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I would just like to also share that a lot of small businesses such as ourselves, the small farmers, we're also just a huge part of our communities, you guys. A bigger part of our community than some of the bigger farmers themselves. So I mentioned just some of the things I've been affiliated with with the county itself. But I mean, we donate funds from our farm to the local communities. Just this year alone, we donated a thousand bucks to communities in Bloom. It doesn't matter, but that's all farm revenue. And we're not millionaires, you guys. Like this is a seasonal business for us also. Um, if you were to tax us or any farmer commercially, we're not selling our product all year long. You guys, I'm sure you've looked outside. I had eight weeks this year to generate business on our farm and to try to make a profit. We don't make a profit, you know, and everything that we generate goes back into our business. Um, it's an educational experience when you come to our farm and many small farms like mine, right? So 90% of our guests come from the city, right? They've never stepped foot on a farm and they can kind of really kind of get a sense of where their food comes from, what goes into to grow a seed, you know? And yeah, so we were just really taken aback yesterday um, being contacted by the assessors, and it seems like they don't have a lot of information to go off of. I understand that your jobs are very black and white, but there's often a little bit of gray. Um, the way they conducted themselves was very unprofessional when they spoke to my husband. We were laughed at this morning by one of your assessors, um, and that's not very professional. So we phoned today, and lo and behold, there was a meeting at 1.30, and so we thought we'd take the opportunity to let you know um, some of the facets of business that are being conducted, and the new types of farming available. So thank, thank you for that. <clears throat> I have a question and my question sure. is how much land do you have under cultivation? Mm, so we have 10 acres, just over 10 acres of hay. And then our flowers are probably just over an acre. Okay. We're an unconventional flower farm in that census as well, because 
we do, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful aesthetic. That's why people come. So it's not just rows and rows of cut flowers either. Um, we have a greenhouse where we grow some of our more coveted crops. We have a perennial garden. Again, it's kind of a, it's an educational experience when you come as well. So it's not a huge land area, probably definitely under an acre for the flowers. So thank you. And I think you heard from our previous presenter. We'll refer that to administration. Yeah. Administration will look into it and get back to you and inform us as well. Did anybody else have a question? No. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Belazer has a question for you. It's not so much a question, but a comment. I know this facility very well. It's just down the road for me. And I was quite surprised to hear that they got the notice that they did, but I definitely know this is a farming operation. So that would be my comment. Thank you. Okay, uh, move for information. Would you like to do that? Mr. Yeah, I don't I'll do know that. if we do or not, but all in favor? Thank you. On to Mr. Honesty as soon as we're finished, because he's quite eager to get his item. <laughs> Thank you again for coming in. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like to introduce council to uh, Sam Lucier, who's our community recreation programmer. Sam actually started with us in, in late April, but as of day one, hit the ground running, organizing and creating our summer program as many council members got to experience this year. So uh, this became uh, one of our first opportunities to uh, catch Sam in the office and uh, introduce her to council. We're also very fortunate because Sam has a lot of experience with the county in that she's spent uh, a couple term positions with FCSS department. So not only understands the county, but has a great connection with our residents and our communities as well. So with that, I'd like to introduce Sam to council. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, on to 5A. <clears throat> Mr. Honesty, you're still there, I see. Um, special project funding, community playgrounds. The floor is yours when you're ready. Thank you. Um, Andrea has been working closely with a few community organizations as they work to raise the funds to in, improve uh, their communities, specifically in this situation uh, related to playgrounds in Ladue County. Uh, we have sort of follow our traditional approach to um, resource assistance and support to our not-for-profits. And that's what we've been doing to date as far as assisting them with their grant writing, fundraising ideas, and even project planning uh, for these playgrounds. We are now at a, at a point where um, groups that we're working with are, are asking us for some Leduc County contributions towards these playground projects. Uh, we don't have a specific policy that addresses playgrounds. We do have a policy CD01 that looks at special project funding, um, which could be interpreted a few different ways. The way that policy generally is approached is around our community facilities. So a community hall, for instance, uh, this is a little bit unique in that, you know, these are um, school playgrounds that are being fundraised by our residents and Ladue County um, citizens that will also benefit the community as well. Um, with that being said, we've taken the same approach to how we've supported these community projects around encouraging that grant writing, grant acquisition and fundraising, and then considering some municipal contributions as well. So we are um, recommending conditional support to the three playgrounds. Uh, the first one being the Warburg uh, Parent Society, which is looking to make an improvement to the Warburg playground. A uh, little bit of a smaller project, but obviously is still significant uh, dollars, especially for the Warburg community. We are also working closely with the Kalmar Elementary um, Parent Group to improve the playground at that school. 
which is a significant project. And to date, they have um, raised a significant amount of money towards uh, their project goals. The third project is the Leduc Society for Christian Education, which is located just south of Leduc and is also working to improve the playground in their community and has raised to date um, approximately $112,000. Uh, we are asking for this to be conditional support at this time because they are still, all three projects are currently waiting for their provincial matching grant contributions. Without those provincial contributions, these projects won't be able to proceed uh, in 2023, but if supported, uh, they will be near their goals and able to start or, or, you know, by around spring 2023 in time for the fall uh, season or even summer, potentially with some of these playgrounds. So we're recommending support. Uh, we do have an annual budget item, which is our recreation uh, cost share capital program. And we do often refer some of our um, not-for-profit pro not for profit, uh, special projects within that fund. So that's where we're recommending that we would prioritize these three projects within that, that funding amount. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Council, uh, for Mr. Honesty? We have Councilor Lewis and then Councilor Smith. Thank you. Uh, it's amazing to see the funds that these uh, groups have raised already. Have they approached Warburg, Kalmar, City of Leduc and Black Gold for funds as well? The Black Gold uh, contributions are related to the ongoing uh, operations maintenance insurance. So that's where they, there'd be no responsibilities on Leduc County or in these three cases on the any municipality. So Black Gold takes on those responsibilities, but has a commitment of the parent group to raise the, mon the funds to build it. Um, there are currently um, between Kalmar and Warburg, uh, no approvals yet, but they are making similar asks obviously at a smaller scale to those communities, um, but th those haven't been confirmed. Uh, the Leduc is a little bit interesting and unique because it is in Leduc County, although it does serve, yeah. you know, so it's a little bit the situation we often fall into. This is a little bit different in that way, um, but we can follow up with that group, but that's not one question. I don't believe we've asked that group around because it is truly in Leduc County borders. Thank you. Councilor Smith. Uh, again, I have a question just about the Leduc Society for Christian Education. I know we funded a rink there uh, over periods of time and the public was allowed to use it. My question, uh, again, because this is a private school on a private property, is that going to be open to the public to use that uh, playground then? Correct. All three would be accessible to the public uh, for the general community. Okay. And again, generally, I know New Sarepta, they don't allow them on the playground during school hours, but they are allowed to win at night. So I just want to make sure that we're not funding something that our public can't use in the end. And I certainly would want to see Warburg uh, step up and put some money into it. It is their community. I know Calmar has been really good about it. So uh, a little bit concerned. That, I mean, I support this motion, these motions today, but I would sure hope that the municipalities that are involved would would uh, jump in again it's in there for their residents as well so if you have any information if the if Kalmar or Warburg uh, are either looking at it it's on their agenda or whether they've outright rejected it it would be appreciated thank you um I'm not seeing any more hands I'll be happy to make this recommendation that council provide conditional funding support allocated from the 2023 recreation cost share capital program to the following groups, Warburg Parent Society, $5,000, Kalmar Elementary School, PTA, $10,000, Leduc Society for Christian Education, $10,000. Um, so the motion is on the floor and I'll just speak to it. I appreciate both the questions asked by Councillor Lewis and Councillor Smith, because I was wondering about them. Um, and for me, they were answered um, really quite clearly and we'll get the information when it comes through. It's interesting because, um, Becoming a grandparent, all of a sudden you notice playgrounds um, around the community and where you can take your children, your grandchildren. And I've used these playgrounds, um, Kalmar School, I haven't used Leduc Society, but they are there for people to use on the weekends and at other times. And I think that's part of recreation that's actually works really well because it is a opening up of perhaps this school area. It's a bit of a partnership with them as well as with the community. So I think it's a great way for us to invest our dollars. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm gonna call the question, all in favor? 
That's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Thank you. 5B, assessment services, approved revised bylaw to revise bylaw number 32-17 to close and sell a portion of the road. Ms. Bernand, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Administration. The report is before you and it uh, will likely strike your memory cords. Uh, on this. So going to uh, the recommendation is that council provide first, second, third reading to the revised bylaw uh, as indicated by the clerk 1622 to close and sell all that portion of road shown on plan 0526189, accepting there out the most easterly six meters in perpendicular width throughout the accepting there out all mines and minerals containing 3.71 acres more or less. This road allowance is to be consolidated with plan 0526189 block one lot two. This is um, a closed road allowance in New Sarepta. So in 2017 and early 2018, numbered company requested to close and purchase an undeveloped road allowance uh, adjacent to their property in the hamlet of New Sarepta. On November 7th, public hearing was held for the closure of the road allowance and bylaw 3217 was given first reading. Ministerial approval was granted on December 14th and on January 9th, 2018, um, second and third readings were granted. At that time, the purchase of the road allowance uh, was not pursued by the uh, purchaser. 2022 administration again received a request from number company to purchase road allowance. Uh, administration recommended the market value of the road, closed road allowance and consolidation with their parcel. On August 23rd, council approved the disposal of the road allowance. Following council's approval to, to dispose of the road allowance, administration sent the information to Alberta land titles to pre-review the road closure description before formal submission. The result of this pre-review was that Alberta land titles denied the registration of this document based on the legal land description contained in the 2017 bylaw 3217. A new legal land description was required in order to clarify uh, the specific area being closed and consolidated. The Duke County engaged a surveyor to provide an updated description that would be acceptable to Alberta land titles for the closure and registration of this closed road allowance. The steps, <clears throat> excuse me, required to address the issue raised by Alberta land titles is a revised bylaw must be approved by council. Council may revise the bylaw as per section 6312G two and three. This section allows for changes that do not materially affect the bylaw in principle or substance. The new bylaw clarifies the legal description of the land. The chief administrative officer must clarify in writing the proposed revisions are prepared in, in accordance with section 63.2, that being no material change. Section 65 of the MGA allows for bylaw 1622 to be deemed to have been made in accordance with all of the requirements of the act. A bylaw made in accordance with section 63 and the resulting revised bylaw is deemed to have been made in accordance with all of the other requirements of the act, respecting the passing and approval of those bylaws, including any requirements for advertising and public hearings. Once a revised bylaw is in place, administration can proceed with the disposal of the land as per the approved motion 18722 that you approved August 23rd. The uh, attachments are the certification by the CAO as well as the revised bylaw. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we need to revise a bylaw so that we can move ahead with our decision of, uh, as of, of August 23rd. So, Councillor Lewis. Just a clarification, this is the first one of these types that I've seen that the county manager has has to sign something for. Can you explain why? <laughs> the act um, outlines that a bylaw under this section, so the, uh, 63, four, 
must not be given first reading until after the chief administrative officer has certified in writing that the proposed revisions were prepared in accordance with the section. So essentially, it's a review that we are not making a material change, that it is only um, for clarification and administrative purposes. Okay. Councillor Smith. I would be prepared to uh, move first reading on the revised bylaw XX22 to close and sell all that portion of road shown on plan 0526189, except they're out the most easterly six meters in perpendicular width throughout accepting throughout all mines and minerals containing 1.5 hectares, 3.71 acres, more or less. This road alliance is to be consolidated with plan 0526189, block one, lot two. First Thank reading. You. First reading is on the floor. Any further comments or questions? I'm seeing none. Again, this is just a correction. We've already approved it once. Let's get it right this time. All in favor? Looking for second reading. Councillor Belazer, thank you. Comments, questions, debate. All in favor? Third reading on the same day. Councillor Lewis, thank you. All in favor? And third reading. Councillor Wanchuk. Comments, questions, debate. All in favor? Unanimous. Good luck, Ms. Bernan. Thank you. 5C1. Rural Transit Solutions Fund Grant. Mr. Mariglod. Good afternoon, Council. So as a matter of some background, on September 7th, 2021, Governance and Priorities Committee, for the matter of applying for the Rural Transit Solutions Grant, sorry, Solutions Fund Grant in support of County's Transit Needs Assessment and Feasibility Study was discussed. There was no resolution adopted at this time, subsequent to this discussion. Hmm, excuse me. Administration then applied for and was successful in obtaining the grant from this fund in amount of $50,000. It's currently being used to provide two thirds of the funding for the county's transit needs assessment and feasibility study, again, a project that's underway right now. In order to execute the grant for this agreement, we've been going back and forth with some <laughs> folks at the federal government. They actually require a resolution of council in order to sign the agreement. So to do so, uh, I've put for the resolution for consideration that Ladue County Administration is authorized to enter into a grant agreement for $50,000 under the CANDA Rural Transition Solutions Fund for Ladue County Transit Needs Assessment Feasibility Study. Thank you very much. I. Uh... When I was reading the report, I thought, wow, September, we've already got the grant. And then I looked more closely and no, it was 2021. Yes. So that's more, more the speed I was expecting. So good to have the grant. I think it, um, we are working on that right now. It's part of our strategic plan and what we're looking at. So looking for someone to put a motion on the floor. Councillor Lewis, can you just read it in for our sure. That the Leduc County Administration is authorized to enter into a grant agreement for $50,000 under the Canada Rural Transit Solutions Fund for the Leduc County Transit Needs Assessment Feasibility. Thank you. Comments or questions? I am seeing none. All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Coleman, well, I think we can do the next one. Yep. Um, so we are on 5C2, which is major asphalt repair program allocation of funds. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, before you is a report and a request that Council approve uh, the transfer of $142,000 of unused funds from the 2022 road program to the 2022 major asphalt repair program so that the asphalt patching that is required on Range Road 275 north of Highway 39, which is Chaboka Highway, uh, is completed before 2022 2023 winter season. Um, so Madam Mayor and Council, um, we have completed approximately two thirds of our current major asphalt repair program. Um, the majority of that program has been um, 
prioritized within the NISCU industrial park and a couple subdivisions. Um, we are in need of transferring funds that are available um, from unused funds spent from the road program to do some uh, asphalt patching on Range Road 275. Um, so you'll see before you um, just a kind of historic look at how we run our major asphalt repair program. Um, ourselves, road operations and our engineering team work together um, in the spring of the year to evaluate our asphalt um, surfaces and identify some of those failured areas uh, in the spring. Um, we continue to watch those areas, but that's when we go out um, to tender to see uh, the price per square meter um, on the repairs. So it can, based on um, the freeze thaw cycle and the, and the issues that we have any particular year um, can be fairly significant. And uh, as you'll note there in 2020, we were right around that 900,000. Um, we do uh, budget $340,000 for this. So this with this addition of 142,000, if council approves, we would be in that $481,000 of uh, major asphalt repairs that would be completed before year end. So we're requesting that transfer. Okay, any questions for administration? Comments? My, my only comment is I, I appreciate that this comes forward, but I have trust that our, our administration knows what they need to transfer. It probably has to come forward because it's a budget piece. Um, but I do trust that if you, you know where you need to put the money, you know what needs to be done. Um, I really appreciate having this before us and we'll support it. Uh, I'll actually put it on the floor if nobody else does, because I think it is it is about uh, good stewardship of our money and ensuring that our roads don't get to a situation where uh, the, the repair cost becomes more than what we expected. So if I, I'm just going to read it in, if I could, Councillor Smith, before I take you. The Leduc County Council approved the transfer $142,000 of unused funds from the 2022 road program to 2022 major asphalt repair program so that the asphalt patching that is required on Range Road 275, Jaboka Highway, is completed before the 2022-2023 winter season. Councillor Smith. Again, what a surprise to come back with uh, a surplus of 142 to use on a road. Normally, you would be back. I do appreciate that. Again, I know that you guys have gone up and beyond what you need to do. You did some stuff in-house, which saved us money, which means that this money, you're not coming back and asking us for 142000 You're uh, reallocating savings that you've done from the work in your department. So I do appreciate that. Definitely be supporting the motion today. Nice to see you getting a jump on to next year's projects as well. Okay, any other comment? Go ahead, Councillor. This, this is Scobie. to fix those uh, shoulders that got pounded out in the spring through the breakup, or is there other? Uh, no, there's, there's more distance there. Yeah, there. So right on 275 North. So the if you're talking about the shoulders on Chiboka 272. Um, so 270, oh, okay. Yeah, 275. Oh, so this is from 239 two, North. Yeah, 39 North, 275. There's some significant failures there that okay. need to be addressed. No right. I don't see any other comments or questions. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. We're going to move into our first public hearing. So we're on 6A, which is to amend Leduc County land use bylaw number 7-08 redistrict from the redistrict from the agricultural district to the industrial agricultural resource district. LA 22-003 lot one plan nine nine two zero five five two northeast thirty three forty eight twenty five west of the fourth Pastilic Stilic um, and hi see the floor is yours Miss Haverland Ada's going to do it. Uh, Ada you're doing yeah. okay whenever you're ready sir the floor is yours. Oh, I have to do the public hearing piece, correct? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I'm going to call our public hearing to order at uh, 2.03 p.m. My name's uh, Merida Blanco, and I'll chair this public hearing, and all questions and comments shall be directed through me. Council is here to listen to the information presented and make a decision on the matter that is the subject of the hearing. This is a formal hearing and not a debate. Everyone wishing to speak who has pre-registered will be- Wise with choice. Um, land use district is agriculture. The parcel size is 13.81 acres and the legal address is plan 992-0552, lot one, 
and it's on, uh, located on uh, Northeast 33, 48, 25, west of the fourth meridian. The municipal address is given and the application is to redistrict the land from agriculture to IAR district. Uh, the recommendation from administration, the planning and development department recommend that the application uh, LA22003 to redistrict 5.59 hectare of land from agriculture district to IAR district located at plan 9920552 lot one, uh, part Northeast 33, 48, 25th, west of the fourth meridian not be supported. Uh, the application intended purpose is to apply for warehousing and storage land use class under the IAR district uh, of the land use bylaw and for the purpose of developing uh, storage units to store recreational toys. Uh, the authority under which the land use bylaw application was reviewed is under sections 191 and section 640 of the MGA and part five and part nine of the land use bylaw. Uh, Madam Mayor, the location of this parcel in the greater context of Ladoop County is shown on through this arrow. It's close to Highway 2. That's the subject land, and that's the parcel which is uh, the subject of rezoning. And so, as I mentioned, the title area is 13.81 acres. This site is uh, five kilometers south of the city of Ladoop and closer to Glen Park Road, or Township Road 490 and Highway 2. Located east of the interchange, if you look at the picture on the far right corner. And the purpose of this rezoning is to move it from agriculture to IAR district and ultimately to develop this parcel for 200 heated condominium storage units to store boats, trailers, RVs, dirt bikes, and snowmobiles. Uh, the intent letter provided shows that it would be a wood frame building and sitting on concrete. 24 hour security uh, will be provided with a chain link and fence, a chain link fence and gate. Uh, this is the applicant uh, website and this picture was taken from the applicant. This is the same kind of development which developed somewhere else. So the surrounding, uh, this slide will show you the surrounding land use designations. And as you can see, uh, most of the area is zoned agriculture. Uh, this uh, uh, green color is industrial agriculture resource district. And that's where the Pentagon Farm uh, Center is located. This was basically rezoned in 2013 to IAR district. And the highlighted portion is the subject parcel, which is the subject of this application. Uh, as through uh, following MGA, uh, notice of public hearing was published in Ladoop Rep on September 9th and September 16th in accordance with section 606 of the MGA. Uh, we also send referral letters to adjacent neighbors and internal and external departments. This is the area which shows that these landowners receive the letters. Um, in response to the rezoning uh, referral comments, we, uh, we received uh, County Engineering Department, Alberta Health Services and Fortis Alberta has no concerns with this application. Uh, we have not received any comments from City of Ladoo. Uh, we just got uh, Alberta Transportation comments, which are mostly like uh, regular comments, which says that Alberta Transportation expect the municipality will mitigate the impacts of the traffic generated by development on local roads and highways and a roadside development permit will be required. We got uh, comments from one landowner in the vicinity and his comments were mentioned on this slide, which says negatively affecting property values, not compatible, no service in the area would disturb the peace and quiet of the area. 24 hour access will create light pollution and vandalism and better to be suited within the Niski business park. Uh, we uh, reviewed this application through the Edmonton Metropolitan Regional Growth Plan. And these are some of the policies which are also in the report and uh, are mentioned on this slide as well. So mainly this application is touching upon two policy areas. One is policy area four and one is policy area six. Policy area four uh, requires uh, provide guidance in terms of compact and contiguous development pattern 
and it asks for developing uh, within existing communities. And uh, the reason for putting in existing communities is to optimize the infrastructure and servicing capacity. Uh, policy area six is basically talking about protection of agricultural land and uh, asking for non-agricultural land uses to be uh, either within uh, uh, areas which are identified through area structure plans or maybe built in the built up environment. Uh, land use bylaws, these are the regulations of the land, provisions of the land use bylaw, which affects this application. Mostly it talks about application for rezoning and what the council should look for. Um, it, it also, the report mentioned the agriculture purpose of the district and the industrial agriculture resource district. Uh, basically, industrial agriculture resource district was created to have clustered uh, agriculture related businesses and processing of agriculture products and uh, it also requires uh, ASP. The municipal development plan policies uh, talks about conservation of agriculture land, uh, minimizing fragmentation and limiting the non-agriculture use. And these are the policies which are mentioned in the report as well. Uh, this is the MDP map four, which highlights this area. Uh, if you see this, there is a green aesthetic. So this is the area which was identified as a potential agriculture hub. Because of the Pentagon Farm Center, this area was first anticipated to be, and if in future they want to develop that, there should be an area structure plan and all agriculture uses to support agriculture. This is the bylaw, the draft bylaw, which they want to so rezone from agriculture to industrial. Agriculture Resource District with a Schedule A. Uh, so basically the, uh, the uh, discussion is about 13.81 acres. They want to rezone. Uh, remainder of the quarter section is, as I mentioned, is a farm, uh, Pentagon Farm Center. It's outside the IDP area. The package has the intent letter. And in the nutshell, we, what we see here is that the, this proposal is inconsistent with the planning policies of the Edmonton Metropolitan Plan, MDP, and the land use bylaw, uh, the land use bylaw IAR district, which requires that um, only agriculture related businesses should be supported. Uh, non agriculture uses should be directed to Nisku Business Park and local employment area. Uh, here I want to mention one fact is that. Uh, if you look at the parcel, the parcel is 13.81 acres, and if it is rezoned to IAR district, it might be compatible with the remaining of the quarter section because the remaining of the quarter section is IAR, and uh, the rezoning itself would not be an issue, but the problem is that when we receive this intent, they will be allowed for all other permitted and discretionary uses, but if they apply under the warehousing and storage category for this particular development, it may not be supported. So uh, the proposal, as I mentioned, is inconsistent with planning policies. Uh, if Even if it is rezoned to IAR, any subsequent DP application would not be supported because it's not meeting the intent of the purpose statement of the district. For these reasons, administration recommend the application be refused. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate the summary at the end. Any cl clarifying questions? Uh, not debate, any clarifying questions right now for our administration? Council Lewis. Thank you. You had said, said the surrounding lands is industrial ag resource district as well, currently. Which, which uh, the, the surrounding, so one of your slides had- Yeah. So that's true. The surrounding land on that particular quarter section is IAR, 135 acres. Yeah, so the 135 acres is IAR, the rest is agriculture. So the little block? Yeah. The, the subject parcel is in agriculture? Yeah. Okay. These are the photos. Uh, let me show you the photos of the property. So this is the property photo. <clears throat> So when it was rezoned to IAR for Pentagon farm equipment, the farm site in 15 acres or 13 acres was left off and was remained agriculture. Is that correct? Yeah, basically it was used as an acreage. Uh, one other thing is that the surrounding lands, if you look at these pictures, these are um, producing very good crops yep. around the years for the wheat and canola. 
Any other questions? So currently at a, the uh, IAR property, less the um, Pentagon farm is in crops? Yeah. So that's being cropped right now. So it is being used for agriculture. Thank you. Any other questions before we have the applicant come forward? I am seeing none. Thank you for the presentation. I'm going to ask the applicants to come forward. Um, and then we may have some questions afterwards for you. So, yep, come, applicants can come forward, uh, take a chair, state your name for the record, and then you can begin your presentation and we'll have an opportunity for some clarifying questions at the end. Uh, good afternoon, Colony Wichetson, developer, Boys with Toys. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Council, Rick Stukenberg. I'm the consulting planner for the uh, project. Uh, my address is PO Box 6706, uh, Drayton Valley. Good afternoon, my name is Brandon Newman Sheshin, co-developer. Okay, so whenever you're ready, begin your presentation. So do we have access to the presentation off of here? The uh, slideshow. This is the slideshow that we submitted. Is Excellent. That, is this it? Yes. Okay. So this is the Glen Park Drive, Leduc County Industrial Agriculture Resource Redistricting Application. Uh, next slide, please. So what benefits here can redistricting provide to this area? Uh, we provide an innovative industry leading service for the outdoor recreational enthusiasts. Our site will have minimal impact on the regional development footprint and the redistricting will enhance the economic competitiveness of both this county and the region. So the site mentioned before the 13.81 acres, uh, the redistricting follows the same land use as the adjacent lands, which was already talked about previously. Uh, the private services will be provided using the best engineering practices that will comply with the county standards. Access is available via Glen Park Road, adjacent to the QE2 Highway, with access situated on the eastern boundary. The development is not anticipated to impact capacity or need for unplanned investments by Alberta Transportation, optimizing the regional development footprint. And as you can see, the figure on the right that we looked at in the previous presentation. So why this location? This is very important to us. Uh, this site provides for the efficient movement of goods, people and services. And this location is just basically for the simplicity of access to the QE2 highway, as will bring the greatest amount of clientele to our site with easy accessibility. As a result, our client base is not limited to just the surrounding communities of Calmar, Beaumont, City of Leduc, Millet, and Leduc County, but also the vast array of traffic that flows down the QE2 daily. Our development standards, we will work collaboratively with the county to set a high standard for build form. We'll use the best engineering practice for the overall project design, access, and services. We will be implementing a master site development plan. In addition to what was said before, we'll have a full-time property manager, state-of-the-art security system with fencing, gates, landscaping, dark skies, lighting, a fully paved, easily accessible lot, and a well-maintained space with snow removal and maintenance to ensure we maintain the county's standard of excellence. Development standards continued. The master site development plan will include private services, paved roads, landscaping, dark skies, lighting, durable buildings, on-site storm drainage, heat and power in each unit. No environmentally significant features, wetlands, or natural areas are located on this site. This minimizes and mitigates the potential impact on the natural living systems. The land drainage system will be engineered to work with the overall stormwater management system with the on-site stormwater retention, erosion, and sediment control measures. The Alberta transportation map. And again, this development is not anticipated to impact the capacity or need for unplanned investment by Alberta transportation optimizing the regional development footprint. And you can see there the roadmap on the figure located on the left side of the slide. Boys with Toys Storage established sites. Uh, the Boys with Toys Storage is proud to have already successfully completed two sites within BC and has received an improved redistricting and updated area site plan for a future location just down the road from here in Parkland County. 
The first BC location is just outside of Sycamus, which is pictured on the left. It features 11 phases of development with over 100 units. And the second, which is pictured in the top right, is in Scotch Creek, BC, and that one features over 70 units. Each of these sites are completely sold out, proving that our design of a wood frame on top of a concrete pad with exterior wrapped the metal sheeting, interior drywalled painted, LED lights, and 210 volt plugs is an industry leader. All bays are heated with forced air to keep each unit at a minimum of 10 degrees, especially in Alberta winters. We feature two 16 by 16 foot drive through doors, as well as one man door for easy access. Entry to all sites is granted through a FOB system, which is available to owners 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are proud to have chosen Leduc County for our newest location in Alberta, potentially, and are looking forward to enhancing the economic competitiveness of both this region and the county. Uh, should you have any more questions, this link on the right side of the slide will take you to the Boys with Toys Storage website, where you can check out the Sycamus, Scotch Creek, and the Parkland County location. I'll turn things over now to Rick. <clears throat> to the mayor and members of council, um, <clears throat> The uh, site selection is very key to our client and as outlined in the uh, presentation, both from administration uh, and from uh, the Boys With Toys, the property being situated uh, in very close proximity to the, um, the QET is a key attribute that we considered in the selection of this property. We believe that this uh, uh, land use optimizes the existing regional transportation infrastructure and enhances the region's connectivity and economic competitive of both the county and the Edmonton region. Um, the site, as we have identified, uh, advantages existing access to the QE2 and the major outdoor recreation destination and amenities in central Alberta. Uh, you know, thinking of Pigeon Lake, Sylvan Lake and areas to the south. The uh, land use that we propose uh, does about the uh, regional freeway and that provides for the efficient movement of goods, services and people throughout the region, which was one of the key pillars of the Edmonton region um, plan. While agriculture remains an important land use, the uh, Edmonton region growth plan also provides for a range of land uses, including country residential, industrial and employment lands. The lands in question uh, that we're proposing for redesignation uh, bring forward um, a warehouse storage facility, uh, which is a permitted use under the uh, county's land use bylaw. And given that this parcel is 13.81 acres, it's already a fragmented parcel. Uh, based on my review of other agricultural policies in the region, uh, it's not um, not felt that the uh, 13.8 acres constitutes a viable agricultural parcel, and it would be more naturally redesignated to uh, use the, the same as the surrounding lands. Um, in terms of agriculture, uh, the regional agriculture master plan also recognizes that not all agricultural land in the region can be converted, conserved for agriculture, and that uh, some agricultural lands are already fragmented, such as a subject property for which we propose to redesignate uh, for the proposed use. The site planning that we would undertake would provide a master site development plan that would include the site servicing, uh, an access management plan, uh, standards for the built form, as we've shown you with photographs presented here today, and this ensures a, a, an efficient and cost-effective utilization of the private on-site services and the infrastructure to optimize the regional development footprint through compact contiguous development. Through our planning process, we would propose to work collaboratively with the county to ensure that all applicable standards for the design, development, servicing, and landscaping, and access to the property are met. Um, through our prior experience, we've established a very good solid working relationship with Alberta Transportation and are comfortable in committing to the council that we will continue that theme of a, a highly collaborative uh, planning process. We believe that the uh, parcel um, with the adjacent industrial uses 
is more logically uh, redesignated to uh, to a new use, which we're proposing, and we would seek the support from council. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's your complete presentation. We'll, we might have some clarifying questions for you. Any questions from council at this time? Council Lewis. Thank you. Is the plan to remove the uh, existing residents? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, and one more if I could. Mm -hmm. uh, how many acres will be used for this, uh, for the buildings? Uh, the entire site, 13.81 uh, acres. Thank you. Um, just uh, related, if I could, to that, I heard talk of a storm water um, pond. I heard, talk, well, you're going to have to deal with your sewage. If you're doing the full eight coverage, you can't be doing the full coverage on buildings because you'll need area for both of those. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, the, I, I think the way that my client has described the utilization of the site is that we would optimize the areas to be built out recognizing that we would have the internal road network as well as an on-site storage pond. And we would use best engineering practice to direct the flow into the pond so that it's properly filtered for outflow into the uh, natural system. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, access management plan, that is access onto Glen Park Road, I assume, yes or no? That is correct. Uh, well, through our uh, consulting team, uh, we will have our uh, engineer who has uh, certification for performing TIAs provide us with a traffic management plan. We would present that to the county and over to transportation for peer review uh, critique, and we would address any concerns that were identified uh, by both the county and Alberta transportation. And just to clarify, you, you know that Glen Park Road is a county municipal road, not an Alberta transportation road, correct? Yes, we are aware of that. Thank you. It's just the proximity to the QE2 yes. that... Yep. Any other questions? Um, I heard a comment that said 13.8 acres isn't viable for agriculture. Is that, was that what I heard? No, I did a, um, thank you for the question. Uh, I did a scan of some of the agricultural policies and other counties in the region. And uh, the one that comes to mind uh, is from uh, Parkland County and uh, their assessment of determining what is a viable agricultural parcel. Uh, they indicated that 80 acres would be the minimum size uh, in Parkland County. We're just looking at this as a, um, a relatively small parcel uh, that's currently in use for uh, a homestead. Correct, uh, and thank you. Um, I, I care, but don't really care what happens in Parkland County. They have their own policies. Uh, we did have a presentation earlier today. I'm not sure if you were here. Uh, a couple who have about 10 acres of land and hay and another acre of land and flowers and are making it an agricultural uh, endeavor. So certainly 13 acres can be a small piece of land. People can make a living off of it or people can do agriculture on it. I just wanted to clarify that. Any questions for our applicant? Councillor Lewis. Thank you. One more. In one of your letters uh, to the county, you had mentioned that you would have city water and sewer. How do you, how would you achieve that in that location? The discussions with uh, my client are that we would provide uh, private on-site uh, uh, services. Um, because of the nature of the development that we propose, there's a very, very low demand for uh, water, uh, likewise with sanitary sewer. So the sewer, we would see that as a pump and haul to an approved location uh, for uh, proper disposal so there's no environmental impacts. Um, water supply could be achieved with a, uh, with a well. Okay, any further questions for the applicant at this time? Just one yep. little. This isn't being currently farmed with the rest of the farm. It's, it looks like it's fenced and it's all on its own, is it? Or is it being uh, farmed with the rest of the, the land around there for the ag purpose? Uh, no, currently it's not farmed. It's, it's just an acreage right now. Oh, okay. 
Any further questions for the applicant at this time? Seeing none, you will have an opportunity at the end of the hearing to have, um, for lack of a better term, a last say. So if you could just step back. Thank you very much. And I'm going to call on registered speakers. I do see that uh, you two gentlemen are, are registered speakers. Um, I'm assuming you didn't know you'd have an opportunity to present, or do you still want to speak to the item? Colin and Brandon. Sorry, we have an opportunity. The applicant has an opportunity to present like you did. And now we have an opportunity for anybody who wanted to speak to the item to speak. But I have your names on the speakers list. Um, did you want to speak again, or you guys are good with where you are now? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that was Colin, Brandon, Rick Stuckenberg, and Darren Marshall. We're all good. Anyone else who's here who would like to speak on the matter? for or against? Okay, I'm seeing no one. Mr. Coleman, did we receive any late um, information on this for or against? No additional correspondence, okay, Manager. No additional correspondence, thank you. With that, I'm gonna ask administration to come forward and see if they have any further questions for them after the presentation. Okay, any questions for administration? Councillor Lewis. It's talkative today. Uh, the assessment will go from agricultural to commercial. Is that correct? If approved, what? the assessment on the property? The assessment uh, is better answer to be assessment department. What is their criteria for assessment? But uh, if it is a commercial entity, definitely it will be. Uh, text as a commercial. And this would be considered commercial? Yeah. So, Madam Mayor, the thing is, that, yes, that it is a commercial. That's why we recommended refusal. That is uh, not an agriculture or agriculture related uh, activity okay. or development. Right. Um, if you could remind me, farther east down that road, I believe is a U-pick and a fertilizer um, location, bricks and berries, that kind of fits in with the agricultural hub notion. Am, am I correct on that? Further to the east? Um, well, I'll, go ahead. Um, uh, Madam Mayor, I'm not exactly yeah. sure about which property, but yeah. this whole area is predominantly agriculture. And the whole intent is that the whole intent of the agriculture hub was to create synergies between agriculture and agriculture related businesses. Correct. Thank you. To, to the Madam Chair, I just might add that, yes, two kilometers to the east, there's Hybrix Manufacturing, which is an agricultural production facility. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for administration at this time? We're not in debate, we're just doing questions. Councilor Lewis? Is this currently an agricultural hub or a future proposed agricultural hub? Um, Madam Mayor, this is a, a anticipated future agriculture hub. And here I just want to put a little bit stress on one point that the agriculture hub uh, definition is in MDP and it talks about any future development, even for agriculture related businesses would require the preparation of an area structure plan to properly plan all Correct. the development. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anything further? No, thank you very much for your answers. Um, applicant, if you'd like an opportunity for any final comments, it's your opportunity before I close the hearing and we go into debate. Once we go into debate, it is just council who will be engaged. Anything further? Yep, come forward. Um, I'd just like to talk a little bit about the tax base. I think um, in Sycamus and Scotch Creek, and I know you don't, guys don't like to talk about Parkland County, um, the tax base there went from agriculture, which is about five or $6,000 a year for that 13.81 acres. Um, the municipalities in BC are charging anywhere from 1,000 to $1,500 a unit. So if we can get 200 units on there, that's $200,000 a year of tax base. 
Any other final comments? The, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> the context of the site uh, raises some really good uh, questions about uh, short-term and long-term use. And uh, as, as a planner, uh, and I participated in the uh, preparation of the uh, Regional Agriculture Master Plan. And one of the cornerstones of the, uh, the EMRB growth plan and the ramp is to recognize that there are divergent uses in the county. Um, and uh, that includes uh, existing agricultural lands, uh, country residential, industrial, and uh, as is the case with the adjacent properties, um, you know, a similar industrial designation. Our proposal basically is to um, be compatible and much the same as the adjacent parcel, parcels of land. Uh, so I think that uh, in principle is consistent with the overall objectives, uh, policies, and criteria for consideration uh, at a regional perspective. Um, speaking differently on that point, um, when a parcel of land of this size is converted to uh, the proposed uh, use as outlined with the boys with toys at a regional scale, does not have impact on the overall agricultural land base in, in, in the region as a whole. Um, and as was indicated, uh, we believe that this project will enhance the uh, economic competitiveness of both the county and the region. And uh, that would be my closing comment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith, we're out of the question time. Hey, uh, just clarifying, I needed to see a map. Uh, that's still possible. We can do that during debate. Okay, so with that, I will close our public hearing at 2.36. Thank you, sir. And council will enter into a debate on the rezoning. Councillor Smith, here's your map. Uh, thank you for that, letting me jump in. We are into the debate, uh, correct? Yes, we are. I know this area well. I've driven by that property now for 50, 60 years. Um, I was really shocked when we allowed the farm dealership to come in and I kind of looked at it. I thought, okay, it's in the farm area. I thought it was okay. It was a commercial property. This property here and all the times I've driven by has never had a crop in it. It's been grassland and it's uh, pretty low lying. So again, I can watch in the spring when the water comes through, moves on, they're talking about a plan uh, to handle that. But this enclosed area, uh, in my opinion, uh, would not be egg. And, I've, and I struggle with, I buy into the concept that big tracts of land need to be protected for farmland. Uh, but I also, you know, look at a balance. Uh, we've allowed a business there. We've got somebody that's coming in that's interested. It's an area that I've looked at. It's not a very viable farm. Um, again, it's it's pretty bad. I don't know what the rating would be. So for me, I, I had to struggle uh, with a lot of the stuff. I looked at the, um, I believe the letters or concerns that were in the package. And a lot of those could be controlled, in my opinion, within a development permit. Um, the lighting, of course, is something. The hours of operation may be a little bit of a concern. So I'm, after much debate and gathering the information and listening to what they go on, knowing the property well, it's not, it's not a Saskatoon farm. It's not used for ag right now. That would be a good place close to the highway to perhaps place the business. So today I would be supporting and speaking on behalf of going forward with this, and I'll leave the debate now for council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, well, I'm going to have to speak against uh, the rezoning. Um, yes, it is a small parcel of land. We're not looking at uh, taking an unsubdivided piece off, um, but it could be used for agriculture. It could be used for country residential. A couple of the pieces that, that I, I find troubling is that we have, a, we have an industrial park that is set up for exactly this kind of business that has got huge um, vacancies or lease, lots of room to build, uh, lots of air opportunity to put in there, which has good uh, access to the roads. I think in, industry needs to stay with industry. I'm concerned, I'm concerned about our road. I'm concerned about what does that look like 
on Friday afternoon, when you have 45 people trying to get in there to get their boat or their quad or whatever else, what does that look like on a road that we actually have and we know we have big equipment on as well. How, how, do, how, does, that, how does that get managed? And I mean, the, we have, um, looking at the map, the uh, access there, and then we have the access that it goes to the farm and then Pentagon over there. Pentagon absolutely does not demand that type of traffic. Uh, they have one or two customers a day maybe, and that's looking people looking for parts. So I'm concerned about what that's going to do for safety for just on our road. Uh, let alone what, what might happen uh, related to Highway 2 there. I don't think this is minimum impact. I think it's pretty maximum impact for that area. Um, and again, we have spaces for this. They're called industrial parks. I've been on council for nine years now. And one of the things that continues to get put on our plates is when council has made good decisions at the time, to move a business into um, a, a, either a country residential area or a farming area, and then that business continues to grow and expand, and the, the people who live there are impacted. And I, I, it's very seldom do we have a success story about where we've plopped a business in the middle of a residential or agricultural area that hasn't created issues, not for the first two years or five years, but eight or nine years, and then it's very difficult. I mean, indoor storage, yeah, you're gonna have a hard time putting a boat in one of those pieces. And then we have this little bit of a drift and it's one boat and it's two boats and it's somebody's motorhome. And pretty soon we've gone from indoor storage to everything. I, I, I believe that we need to be mindful that we have, number one, we have space for this and it's called an industrial park. We have space in New Sarepta, we have space in Sunnybrook. We have space across our county for things like this. Um, this, is a, this is a bad location because of its proximity to the highway, in my opinion, and so would not be supporting the rezoning. Thank you. And we are open for anyone else who would like to enter into debate. Councilor Lewis. Thank you. I would support today's um, subject matter, sorry, uh, rezoning. the rezoning. Thank you. Uh, I look at the map and what surrounds it. And there's great farmland. This property, the 13.8 acres is not agricultural. It is not taking anything out of agricultural production. Um, seeing some of the photos of the, the, the properties that this company already owns, it looks like they're well-maintained, that they're controlled, that they're fenced, that they're, um, it appears to be under good management. Um, I don't, I don't see the negative impact of this because there isn't, um, the, farmland? The, the farmland on it. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other comments, questions, or debate from council? Councillor, uh, Wanchuk. I'm just debating looking at the map here and that section to the east of it is a piece left off that you can't even get in there to farm it now mm -hmm. right you can't do nothing mm -hmm. with it well i don't know why they want to divide it there i, I agree with you danny there's a lot of places like cavanaugh's good access and you yeah. good land out there for it thank you councillor smith Again, while we're in debate and we'll continue to debate, I'd like to move the recommendation that's before us today. The Planning and Development Department recommends that the application LA22-003 to redistrict 5.59 hectares, sorry, I don't have my glasses, which is 13.81 acres of land from Ag Agriculture District to IAR Industrial Agriculture Resource District located on Plan 9920552, Lot 1, PT North S334825, West of the 4th, M. Be supported. Thank you. And did you have another comment now that you have the motion uh, on the floor? Again, uh, microphone. Comment is I, I, I would support it. I, I know the property well. Uh, again, it's a bottom wetland that has never been in the 
Okay, Miss. Uh, yep. Just procedurally, Madam Chair, because this is a rezoning, it requires three readings of a bylaw. So oh, it's a bylaw. Yes, the order of business would be for someone to do first reading of the. Bylaw. Would you like to do first reading? Yes, please sort it for that. No, and okay. I was. Just, uh, again, I will move first reading uh, on that recommendation that it be supported. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, and uh, we are in debate. We have first reading on the floor. I will not support it uh, for the reasons I provided before. I think it's going to create a traffic uh, issue or the potential for a traffic issue. I think, as we heard earlier, we have lots of young people who are looking for small holdings to put up a, a small farm. It maybe hasn't been used like that before because perhaps it hasn't been up for sale for somebody. Um, our agricultural land is, is disappearing at an at a incredible rate. Um, you know, this is not compatible with the adjacent use of land. And so for those reasons, I will not be supporting first reading. Any further comments or questions? Call the question, all in favor? Opposed? I'm sorry, can we do opposed again? I wasn't, one, two, three. So it's a tie. So it's lost, that is a loss. And we are finished. We just had to do the first reading, correct? We have to do all three? Um, all three would be available if council were to proceed with first okay. reading. So because first reading was defeated, I'm assuming second and third yep. are not okay. possible. So it has been defeated. We wish you luck wherever you decide to build. Thank you. Thank you and apologize, Mr. Coleman, for um, not going into readings there. But we will go into our next public hearing which is LA22002, um, is it? Or have I skipped one? Yes, we will take, uh, let's, while we're setting up, I'm going to take a uh, recess until 2.50. So four minutes while we're setting up. As pre-registered will be given an opportunity to speak once to the matter as called on by myself, the chair. Each presenter must state his or her full name, address, and their interest in this matter, including whether they are in support or non-support. Individuals who do not identify themselves will not be given the opportunity to speak. Presenters are to stay within five minute time limit of their presentation and are encouraged when speaking to keep the presentation to the point and refrain from restating points raised by previous speakers if possible. If new presentation materials are provided, you may be required to email them to the legislative coordinate, 
coordinator, and I'll call now on planning and development to introduce the subject of the hearing. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The legal land description of the subject lands is Northeast 1450, 23rd west of the 4th Meridian. The subject lands are located south of Luma on the west side of Highway 21, approximately two kilometers south of Highway 625. The lands are currently divided into districts to facilitate natural resource extraction. These, this land use amendment application seeks to return the subject lands from a direct a direct control district, which has supported resource extraction to its previous designation of an agricultural country residential transitional district. As a result, Leduc County Planning and Development recommends that the subject property be redistricted to its former designation. Redistricting the lands to agricultural country residential transitional would support agricultural operations while allowing for limited residential and secondary uses. The supporting authority which upholds this recommendation comes from the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Growth Plan, the Leduc County Municipal Development Plan, and the Leduc County Land Use Bylaw. Or accordingly, this policy supports opportunities to redistrict prime agricultural lands for agricultural uses and to minimize fragmentation. The agricultural land use suitability rating indicates that the subject land is consistently entirely made up of class two, which is considered a high capa capable agricultural lands. This aerial image shows the subject lands in 2007 prior to the resource extraction applications. In 2007, the first development permit was issued for the clay borough pit. In 2011, a development permit was issued for a clay extraction operation. In 2016, two development permits were issued for the reclamation of the direct control area. While in 2017, an additional permit for the reclamation of the clay pit was applied for and awarded, which also included infill. In 2021, an 18.5-acre farmstead parcel of land was conditionally approved. This subdivision was approved on the condition that the lands be redistricted from a direct control district to the agricultural, count, agricultural country residential transitional district that it was previously. This aerial image shows the subject lands of two, as of 2022. Oh, what's in there? Um, this photograph was taken on September 20th, 2022. This image depicts the subject lands as seen from the west. This photo here was taken on September 20th, 2022. And this image depicts the southwest perspective of the subject lands. With respect to the referral area, one neighboring landowner provided comment and the landowner expressed concern over the reclamation state. The full letter is included in the attached report. Uh, Agricultural Services has provided that they are supportive of the redistricting so long as the affected lands have been returned to a functional capability. No additional concerns or, or objections have been raised. Administration recommends that Leduc County uphold first, second, and third readings on the proposed amending bylaw to redistrict the 2.5 acre portion of land from the direct control district to its former designation of the agricultural country residential transitional district. The removal of the direct control district supports the return of the subject lands to its previous agricultural land use and capabilities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for administration? Councillor Lewis. Thank you. Yeah. In the letter from the adjacent landowner, it talked about um, reclaiming it back to its original state. And you had said that it needs to be put back to its functional capability. Um, are those two different things? Yes, they, well, actually I'll let Charlene interject. <laughs> Ms. Haberland. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lewis. So the application in front of us was for the land amendment. And yes, you are correct. 
The reclamation itself of the parcel is under the direct control permit, which is a condition of the permit, which is a completely separate matter from the land amendment that's in front of us today. We certainly can still uh, follow up with conditions under the direct control permit in making sure that the lands are in compliance with the conditions that were set out within that permit. But um, as in front of us today is literally just putting the rezoning back to original state, which doesn't change the direct control permit itself. Councillor Smith. Just a question to admin. Of course, we're looking at uh, this was a clay extraction pit uh, operated for a few years, has been reclaimed in uh, the opinion of admin. Um, are you satisfied with the reclamation project or certificate or the work that's been done to move forward with redistricting this, possibly redistricting this back to ag CR? So through, through the chair, the um, Kayla has followed up with the applicant that did put in the application for the reclamation and they have done the reclamation plan. However, they have not yet submitted a reclamation certificate. They are in the process of working on that and they said they will be providing that to the county. Yep. So at this time, would it be better to wait till that certificate is in? So we're making a judgment on uh, a finished product, not on the assumption that it will be finished. Just again, asking for clarification. So through the chair, yeah, like, even if it's not, like I said, it's we can still have the opportunity to enforce the conditions of the development permit, which has putting it back into the land use today um, has no bearing on the conditions that are still in front of us from the direct control permit. Um, thank you very much. And related to that question, who who decides when it's done right? Do we send out egg or do we send out you, Ms. Haverland? Who decides when the reclamation is done? So through the chair, uh, egg agricultural services have looked at the land and they thought it looked satisfactory. However, it's an actual reclamation certificate that will determine that it's put back to its original state. And and we provide the reclamation certificate? No, the company um, okay. that they have Thank hired you. will provide the certificate. Okay. Perfect. I've watched it go from farmland to extraction pit and back in and the people that judge whether or the would be the cows walking out on it right now so it is back to farmland and being used for that so I would say they were pretty good judges and there is some water left there but there was water a water body there before thank you any further clarifying questions for administration if not um, thank you very much you can step back um, Mr. Coleman, have we received any other relevant correspondence that was not included in the package? No additional correspondence, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant here and would like to speak to the application? I'm seeing a no, we're good. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any further questions for administration? Seeing none, the applicant, uh, I assume, isn't gonna wanna speak on the second opportunity or do they? No? Thank you. With that, I will uh, call our public hearing to an end at 2.58 and open up for um, debate. And we have some three readings to get through. Um, I, I'm going to jump in and say I'm happy to put my name to first reading. If uh, the soil is as good as what is uh, we heard, certainly uh, two and a half acres any farmer would want to reclaim that to the very best and highest quality that they can so that they are continuing to uh, be able to produce, be it pasture, hay, or uh, crop off that. So I will put my name to first reading. Councillor Bazlazer. Yeah, just a comment to that. It's, it's not often we sit here and see land actually turned back to agriculture. So with that, I will totally support your first reading. Any other comments? Councillor Smith, Councillor Lewis. I'd be supporting it as well. It is a rare day when we see farmland going back in after extraction, but it is happening and uh, more fre frequently. So definitely would be in support of the first reading on the floor right now. Councillor Lewis. Can I ask a clarifying question? I'm, I'm just looking at the two and a half acres. Is that correct that we're only putting two and a half acres back into farmland? 
just uh yeah we will allow just to clarify Sorry. we're in debate we're not in a public hearing anymore so through the chair the land amendment itself was direct control which is only for two and a half acres the use itself is separate it it has been used for it's being used for agricultural use however the district itself we're just actually putting that district area of two and a half acres back to agricultural country residential transitional district gotcha. thank you very much no more hands going to call first reading all in favor unanimous looking for someone to move second reading councillor Belazer. comments questions all in favor looking to do third reading on the same day councillor wanchuk all in favor and third reading sure. councillor uh scoby all in favor that's good thank you very much on to 7a which is a direct control application D22-221 frame and fabric building force inspection services. Is this you, Ms. Haverland? Whenever you're ready, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. So planning and development bring forth a development permit application that is in the direct control district for consideration. The subject parcel is located within the Nisku Business Park. It is south of Highway 625 and just north of 17th Avenue. The parcel was originally approved as direct control back in 2017 or sorry, not direct control, as for industrial general use. Land uses that surround this parcel are direct control, agricultural and country residential district. It is located adjacent to the Black Mud Creek and within planning policies, it is in with the Black Mud Area Structure Plan, the NISCU uh, MEC, Plan, Edmonton Metropolitan Regional Growth Plan, and of course, in accordance with the land use bylaw. Planning and Development did do an extensive referral on this application to ensure that their uh, residents to the east were aware of the proposed um, addition and mm -hmm. new building on site. So like I said, access will be located at the south of the proposed property line from 17th Avenue. Avenue. The total area of the parcel is 62 acres. Um, however, direct control itself only encompasses around 20 acres of the site. It is located within the Black Mud Area Structure Plan, which is identified for business park development. Um, in front of us right now for consideration is a frame and fabric building which is 2,400 square feet in size. In 2021, uh, council did approve a frame and fabric structure that was approximately 2,000 um, in size as well. So our proposal that we bring forth today is to, we are recommending that we approve the uh, frame and fabric building of 2,400 square feet. Uh, this is the site plan. It is quite a small, significant area on in perception of the 20 acres. Um, we do believe that the proposed uh, frame and fabric actually will reduce impacts to the area. It does provide coverage for the employees and will help with noise reduction. We did receive no referral comments back from any of the adjacent landowner letters that we did send out and as well as internal departments had no concerns with this application. This is the building and this is where the proposed frame and fabric building will sit. Therefore, our recommendation is that council approve the development permit D22221 for a frame and fabric structure with the attached condition, conditions, thank you. Thank you very much. Comments, questions? I am seeing none. Oh, go ahead, Councillor Smith. 
I really wish the building would have been permanent. Uh, <laughs> again, the company's been there for a while and, and they have established themselves. I'll support it, but I would like to send a message to them that come back and you've got a great site. Let's make sure that those buildings, uh, if you're going to stay there, is, uh, would be permanent going forward. So I will support it, but I hope there's not a large string of covered buildings coming back to us on this property. But today I will support the the covered building, but I may not be so apt to do it in the future as that is a really big site and that company has committed to being there. So again, in the future, I'd sure like to see permanent buildings. Um, Councillor Smith, would you put your name to the recommendation with the conditions that were listed? Yes, I will do that. Okay. Thank you, and there are 12 conditions. I won't ask you to read them. Oh, you should. He does, <laughs> he does have the radio voice. So. So we have a motion on the floor uh, to approve the frame and fabric building um, at uh, Force Inspection Services. Any other comments or questions? I am seeing none. I will support this. I think it is a, uh, I hope it shows that the business is continuing to grow and, and uh, be viable in our backyard, which is where we want to have businesses in our business park. And, um, so I will support it. I'm seeing no other hands up. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. 7A2. Thank you, Madam Chair. Still planning and development. Once again, bring another application forward for the same subject lands. I'm not going to go through the um, details of the parcel itself as we have just all seen them in front of us. Um, what I am going to provide is that it is a small addition to the to the permanent structure of the industrial building. It is 1,190 square feet. And um, once again, it will provide extra coverage for the employees and help reduce the sound that does come from the site. Therefore, uh, planning and development are recommending that this application be approved as well for an addition to the industrial building. And once again, we did not receive any comments from any of the adjacent landowners. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? <laughs> and we've got a bill. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it was, so we've got that one. Again, I, I agree with you. It just shows some faith in the business community and we're starting to wake up and more people coming through this business came in, said what they were gonna do, have established themselves. I just wanna make a comment on no uh, letters from the VISTA, meaning that administration, council and developers are understanding the challenges that the residents across the, uh, across the creek have. And so for that, everybody working together, including county developers and council means that we're not having those huge concerns. Um, and if you would like, I would definitely put my name to this as well. And before we debate it, Thank you. Yep, we have a motion on the floor for debate. Um, I will support it. And, I, and again, I, I really believe that um, force inspection services is a really good industrial client uh, here in the county. And I'm looking on page 80 of 99 of our report. And, um, there's, a, there's a sentence that says, the county received no comments from any of the circulated residents. County has received no complaints of operating outside approved hours since the last approval of development permit. It really shows that when, when this company comes in and they see the, um, the conditions, they actually really are adhering to them, or I assume coming in and having a conversation with, with our uh, planning department. And I think that just really shows a good customer for us. Any other comments or questions? I'm seeing none, all in favor. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that's all she wrote. So I will adjourn at 3.08. Thank you.